this is Herman and in this video we're going to talk about different classes of signal such as spontaneous time signals, discrete time signals, analog signal or digital signal. Well, let me define these the continuous first. Um, the continuous time signals are the signals that are continuous in x-axis. Whereas the discrete time signals are the signals that are discrete in x-axis. You must be wondering what continuous and discrete is. Discrete is so just hang in there and we'll do it by examples in a minute. Um, whereas the analog signals are signals that are continuous in y-axis and the digital signals are the signals that are discrete Let's try to understand the difference between the continuous time signal and discrete time signal using an example. So if I have something like this, I can observe that this signal is defined for all the time instances from here till here. So we can say that the signal is continuous time because it is continuously defined for all the values of the time and we will label the continuous time signal as x of t and we use a t letter to denote an independent variable on the continuous time signal now if i have a discrete time signal that will be like that is going to be defined on the discrete values only something like this so you can see that the signal is not defined for any value of time between 0 and 1 but only at 0 and 1 and there is no value of signal or you can say the signal is not defined at any value of time from 0, 1 to 2 so this final signal is called discrete time signal and the symbol that we usually use is x square brackets and small n. So the dependent variable for the case of discrete time signals is n. Um, before we move on, just a small observation that this t has a unit seconds and that small n is unitless quantity, but we usually use the word sample to make it convenient to understand. Another important observation is that this t, this t is a real number, and that n is always going to be an integer, be positive or negative, so it could be minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, or any integer possible, but it cannot take any value other than integer. Um, why is this so? This might get clear when we go into the concept of sampling. So let's talk about the analog and digital signals now. Uh, as the definition suggests, that analog signals are the signals that are continuous on y-axis. So we already have a signal which is continuous on y-axis. Um, um, what do I mean by that? Let's just call this thing as 2 and let me just call this amplitude as 4. So this signal x of t can take, well, can take any amplitude from 2 till 4. So it can take a value of amplitude of 2, it can take a value amplitude of 2.0001, it can take amplitude value of 2.0002 and so on and so forth till 4. So what I want to say is that the amplitude is going to take any value from 2 till 4 in this signal and therefore this signal is a analog signal as well. Now let's take the example of digital signals. Well, as the name suggests that it is discrete in Y, which means that it only has finite amplitude levels. So let's just take this thing as our example. So in 
this signal, um, you only have two possible amplitude variable values. Let's just call it plus a and minus a. So this example is of digital signals. Um, there is another observation to make and that is for any signal it has to be either this or this and it has to be either analog or digital. So we can't have a signal which is continuous time and discrete time and analog. However, we can have a signal which is continuous time and analog. We can have a signal which is continuous time and digital. Similarly, we can have a signal which is discrete time and analog or discrete time and digital and so on and so forth. So if I look at this signal x of t, uh, this is continuous time and because it is defined for all the time instances from here till here. So this signal is continuous time and if I look at the amplitudes, the amplitudes are also available from 2 to 4 for all the values from 2 to 4. So this signal is continuous time and analog. Whereas um, if I look at this signal, let me just call this thing as y of t. And this is t. Well, now you have seen this mod t here. So the thought must come to your mind that this must be continuous time. Well, it is continuous time because it is defined for all the time instances from let's just say here till here. So if I want to know what's the value of this signal at this point, here is plus a. And if I want to know what the value of signal is at this point, it's going to minus a and so on and so forth. So this signal is continuous time, but it only takes a discrete levels or discrete amplitudes. So this signal is continuous time and digital. And about this example, let me just take you, let me make this thing a bit proper. These are the values of the signal, they are all at the same height. So now um, this x of n is discrete time because it is only defined at the discrete levels of time. So this is discrete in time and the amplitude is also finite because the possible values of amplitude is let's just say 1 and minus 1. So this example is an of, so this is an example of discrete time and a digital signal. So what is left now? So we have continuous time analog, continuous time digital, discrete time digital. So yeah, the last one is discrete time and analog. So one possible example for such signal is such signals is this. So here you can see that the signal, let me call this thing y of n. So the signal is although defined on discrete times only, but can take any possible value of amplitude. And when I say any possible value of amplitude, I mean it cannot really count the possible values of amplitude that this signal can take. So this signal is kind of continuous in y axis so we call this analog and because this is only defined at the discrete levels of time so we call it a discrete time signal so yeah i mean sometimes it's kind of confusing um but it is what it is so this signal is discrete time and analog so just a quick recap the continuous time signals are the signals that are continuous in x axis and the discrete time signals are the signals that are discrete in x-axis whereas analog and the digital signals are continuous and discrete on y-axis respectively.
and also the signal has to be either continuous time or display time and analog or digital so i hope um, this is clear to you guys if you have any question just post it on the comment section below thank you